It was a couple of weeks before Beltane. The apple blossoms were all beginning to open up, and the sugar pink frilly peony was giving off a sweet scent. My mother had planted the delicate foliage here oh so many years ago to soften the landscape's stony environment and protect against malevolent magic while simultaneously attracting good fortune. It was quite a windy day here in England and I thought I'd start on a little maypole project I had been planning to do for quite some time. A couple of months back, I had found this fairly straight and tall stick in the woods, which I felt could be used for the center pole. It wasn't perfect, it indeed had a huge crack in it, but nevertheless it was the most suitable stick for this project that I could find, and was very pleased to have come across it. I took my favourite chair outside to sit beside the blossoming flowers. I almost always use this chair when studying or crafting magical items. Together we have seen many a wonderful creation bloom. It's funny how much a simple item like a chair can mean to you. Like most things, it came into my life in divine timing and has its own magical story to tell. It was now time to strip the bark from the pole. Traditionally, the maypole was created from the tallest evergreen found in the woods. After it had been cut down, the lower branches were removed and the bark stripped. However, they would leave a bit of greenery at the top. The maypole is a Beltane custom which has never died out. Historians suggest that the tradition of maypole dancing came from Germany, travelling to Britain where it became part of a fertility ritual held every spring. I remember dancing around a maypole in my younger school years in summer fairs, delicately holding the ribbons, skipping around, weaving in and out of the adjacent ribbons as the sun shone in all its glory and the wind swept through my hair. It was always a very enjoyable experience, memories which I will forever cherish and there should still be some photos of me as a child around the glorious maypole, tucked away somewhere at home. Why, Mr. Squirrel, perhaps you could help me out. Having leveled off both ends and stripped away the bark, I took a look at the finished pole. It had taken a while to remove the bark, but it was well worth it, and I'd also left on a little hook, perchance I'd want to hang something on it. Sweep, 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 sweep away your 
do. Sweep, 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 sweeping with a broom. Sweep, 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 sweep away or do. Time to decorate the top of the pole. I had prepared five rose stalks to stick onto a spray can lid, which would then be used to fix the topper to the pole. I decided not to cut the stems off for this particular maypole, as I'd like to remove them to be reused after Beltane. Now for the fabulous ribbons, for which I chose the colours green, purple and pink. Green for health and growth. Pink for love and beauty. And purple for wisdom and transformation. I tied the ribbons to the stalks for ease of removal when the Beltane season is over. A week later, I continued on with my project, wrapping some leftover ribbon over willow to create a wreath.
some yarn, I attached the ribbon circlet to the stalks of the flowers. I can add some fresh flowers to the wreath on the day of Beltane, I thought. a change of clothes more suited to enjoy the season, it was time to set up the maypole. was finally complete. Now to enjoy it in all its glory. That's all for today, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to continue following me on my next adventure. Bye! The moon she dances like the waves, like the waves on the shore Making circles, making circles like the waves, like the waves on the shore.